Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here. And today I want to share with you my recent phone interview with Dan, aka MC Pressure, from Australian hip hop trio Hilltop Hoods. We have a chat about their upcoming Australian tour, about their new album, The Great Expanse, and we also go back to the beginning and find out how they became so successful. There's so much to cover, so let's get into it now. Three, two, one. Let's do this. Raven it up. Raven it up. Raven it up. Fun. Hashtag Lauren, rave it up. Yes. Sorry. Thank you, I like that effect. We're raving it up. Dan MC Pressure, welcome to Rave It Up. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you going? Yeah, I've got good. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Since this is your first time on the show, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better and start from the beginning okay. to get a good idea well, of how you made it to where you are today because we know the entertainment industry is not a walk in the park. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. Back in 1994, you and Matt established a friendship, you know, based on your love of music and then eventually got Barry on board down the track. But... As we all know, no such thing as an overnight success as well. So how long were you guys working at your craft for before you actually got your first big break in the industry? Uh, first big break came when uh, Nosebleed section kind of blew up in 2003. Before that, it was just, uh, as you said, I met stuff in high school and debris sort of came on about four or five years after. It was one of the few producers in sort of Southside Adelaide who was making his own beats. Um, so I think we put our first release out in 97, which seems like forever ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we just kind of did it as a hobby from there. I feel like we were more of just doing what we loved and flying blind. We never really tried to make it as, as such. Um, it just kind of happened organically, so yeah. So do you it think is. you had like other careers in mind, you know, when you were growing up and going, oh, was music what you always wanted to do or...? Um, I was actually studying IT at the time and working as a storeman and just a, a warehouse packing boxes, doing some pretty mundane stuff. Um, I worked in a kitchen as well, but I kind of tried my hand at a few things like that and gave most of them away because my heart just wasn't better at a guess and it just sort of, I just gravitated towards music. And it's funny, I never tried to make a career out of music, I just did it for so long, but yeah, it just kind of happened. Well, the universe had other plans for you, obviously, which we are so grateful for to this day. <laughs> and IT is very, very different, so that's a good eye-opener for us. <laughs> and I've got to say, like, the names Pressure, Suffer and Debris, they're really unique and keep you different amongst all the other artists out there. How did you guys come up with those names? Uh, in the area in the hills where we grew up in Adelaide, graffiti was a pretty big thing in the 90s. And uh, we grew up pretty heavily influenced by the hip-hop culture that was attached to it up there. There's a lot of sort of BMX riding and skateboard sort of culture going on as one big scene. So everyone kind of ended up dabbling in graffiti when they were younger and giving themselves like a name from their tag. And that's where those names came from. Um, not that we were ever really graph writers, but um, we thought we were when we were kids. <laughs> <laughs> And I've got to say, you know, Cosby Sweater was released back in 2014. Gosh, time flies. And just to give you a bit of an yeah. update, that video has over 18 million views now. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and I've got to say, I know, you should be very, very proud. And there have also been some, yeah. it's been, uh, some like funny comments on the video. Like one guy was saying Hilltop Hoods are the living proof that Jesus had kids. <laughs> and then, <laughs> okay. And another guy says, uh, this is such a great song and it's edited so well, these guys should be way more popular. That comment was two years ago, and man, have you guys blown up in, in like a really good way since then. <laughs> yeah, I, it just keeps getting bigger for us. I keep telling my wife maybe I should go back to having a career or some sort because music won't last forever and it just keeps getting bigger. So I don't even know how, but uh, I'm pretty thankful for it. Well, if you keep doing it because you love it, then... It's going to keep going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Live with that passion. Exactly like, I get asked by a lot of young heads, like, you know, like, what's the key? I'm like, oh, man, there's no formula. Just do it because you love it. If you're not loving the music that you're making, then no one else is going to love it. Yeah, I love that. And it has been really keeping you guys busy as well. You know, you're fresh from Grooving the Moo and also supporting Eminem on his Australian tour. How was that? Did you learn a lot I from him? I worn out from Grooving the Moo, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. 
Uh, supporting it, Group of the Boobs, I mean, in my opinion, that's the biggest sort of touring festival in Australia now. That's a bit of a joy. But um, supporting him was a real sort of moment in my career for me. I grew up listening to his music and was very inspired by his earlier work when I was sort of coming up. Um, so to support him for a second time, but it was, it was very different this time. We supported him in 2011 when he first came to Australia. He wasn't as big then, and we definitely weren't as big then. So it was really different this time around. I mean, he set the, he set the record for a live performance of any sort of the Southern Hemisphere ever for that MCG show. So to be part of that was amazing. Wow, what an honour. Yeah. Jeez. Pinch yourself moment. <laughs> Most certainly, yeah. No, that's a moment in your career that's... Um, Obviously, that would never be repeated, not by us anyway. Um, Until you support Eminem yeah, again. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a huge, it's a huge moment. Or have him support you in the future, who knows? We'll see. Yeah, I think that'll happen. <laughs> It'll be a dream. And your eighth studio album, The Great Expanse, is also out now. And I've heard that you guys like never stop writing and always have beats on hold. So does that mean you always have another album like stewing in your mind? <laughs> Yeah, we're making, we've got about three or four new songs in the works at the moment. Wow. Jeez. Going I ahead. Know. I love it. <laughs> it, feels like a, it feels like a sickness when I say it like that. Like we just spent three years toiling over the great expanse and put it out. And some of them were songs that we started working on for that as well. Like It's not, it's not like we're going to put out a 10 song album and we only make 10 songs. We probably started 30 or 40 songs at the best. I think there's 12 songs on the record and an intro. That's what made it on there. Not because it was finished, it was our favourite lot, but some things sort of were started then and, and we've workshopped them since and there's some new stuff. And, and we're always sort of talking to producers and, and going back and forth with people and new music, so yeah. it never stops really. Well, I guess the songs that don't end up on the album, you just kind of work on them a bit more and then put them on the next album. <laughs> yeah, uh, most of them get scrapped, to be honest. But, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so at like, least... It's kind of like if it, didn't, if it didn't make the record, then there's probably a reason for that, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't right for it. Yeah, you didn't you didn't feel it. <laughs> yeah. And you guys make some really great cover arts for your albums as well. You know, Armageddon has appeared on all of your artwork since your first album. It's been a constant theme throughout. Where do you guys know like where to take the story next on the next cover? Is that a whole nother thing you gotta think about as well as the songs? Uh, the artwork is usually spawned from the concept of the record. Yeah. So we came up with the title The Great Expanse and then talked to our talked to our illustrator and like, you know, here's what it sort of title means to us. I uh, come up with some imagery to it. Or sometimes we have some ideas, like this is where we want you to go, but you'll come back with something similar or totally different and we'll like that more. But yeah, it's just, it's a bit of a collaboration with an illustrator, I guess. And he's the same guy, Johnny Inglehart's his name, that's been um, drawing from us since day dot, so yeah. Well, he's done a really good job. I love it. Yeah, he's killed. And for those wanting to come, you know, celebrate this great release with you guys, they can see you live in August and September for your world tour. And tickets are really selling fast. You know, you just added second shows for Melbourne and Brisbane just to keep up with the demand. Is it going to be like the biggest yeah. Australian tour ever? So what can we expect? You know, what makes this one different from your other tours? Um, so, well, I mean, I guess for a start, there's going to be a lot of new music. In yes. The I think we're playing about <laughs> and the new three album. quarters of the new record. Yeah, we have played about three quarters of the new record. I mean, the staples that people know as well, as well of course. Um, we've got a, lot, a bunch of new guests we haven't worked with before coming to the show as well. And we're going to play some old songs. Ooh. Yeah, which we haven't played in years. Um, we've been getting a lot of requests uh, over social media, like, play this, play that, from some obscure, like, release that we did a long time ago. So we're going to rehash a few of those. Have some fun with that. A bit, a bit, a bit of a throwback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think it'll be good for you guys to get back on the road because your last headline tour was back in 2016, right? It's been a while. I know. When you said like that, I feel so slack. No, you've been re yeah, releasing I've heaps of music. I've been dating myself in three years. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, yeah, you, you have like, been busy. It's been a long time we've done right now. Yeah, we've been hell busy, but we haven't done our headline tour for so long. Um, so it's so nice to come back and see the tickets fly at the door like they have and we're super pumped to get up there and, and do our own, do a, do a bigger set, a longer set to our audience. Well, you know, it's so really in that. high demand, you know, when Brisbane got sold out in like four hours, like, whoa. <laughs> I know, it's wild, right? Melbourne as well. Yeah, Great. incredible. 
And you will be on the road for a really long time this time around because it is a world tour, so 14 countries yeah. across the globe. Um, Where do you think you're most excited to visit? Are there any places that you haven't travelled to yet that you're going to? Uh, yeah, we've got to Manchester and Belgium. Yeah. I've um, never, never been to those two spots. Um, I think there's a tour in the UK. Oh, there's a couple of places in the States as well. Wow. Do you get any, like, time off in those places to enjoy it as well? <laughs> oh, that's the other one. Um, very rarely these days. Like 50, I think it's 51 shows oh. in about five months. So it's pretty hectic. The Australian um, tour is more laid back. They're much bigger shows, so we need time between them to sort of put them on because we're playing arenas. Yeah. Um, but the shows overseas are sort of like, more like clubs and theatres. So we sort of, you know, we're doing five or six shows a week. Yeah, going from one place to the well, next. Well, we're not home in Australia, so very little time. Oh. We had a day off in Portland and a day off in Paris. But that's all I can see from my schedule. <laughs> oh. So I'll go check them. It's a shame. As long as you've got a bit of time to, you know, rest and sleep and get ready for the next show. Yeah, there's not much of that. I think we're doing most of it on a sleep on bus this time. Oh, um, goodness. Well, good luck. Yeah, I might need it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be busy. You're going to take, like, a couple of uh, months off just afterwards. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, the show ends in Honolulu, so I'm going to pull up on a Hawaiian beach for a fortnight after the show ends and get my soul back. And catch up on your sleep. <laughs> yeah. We'd also love to know, do you have any specific things to get ready before you go out on stage? You know, you'd have to warm up really well, you know, to be able to rap and not stumble over your words, right? Yeah, I mean, we do vocal warm-ups and we do a bit of stretching as well. I mean, they that run around the stage like crazy people. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a bit of a, bit of a workout and sing along before every show. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> and a workout yeah, on a little, stage. I don't want to overdo it. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview, Dan, but it's been an absolute pleasure. As a closing statement and what is probably the most important question, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14-year-old self? Uh, don't put out the earlier records because you weren't ready. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Still that's working on your craft. Yeah, yeah, fine tune it to you, to you, to you. Better at making music, but uh, that's a hell of a thing, right? Yeah, exactly. When you're ready to release it at the time, you're you're happy with it, right? <laughs> then you look back and uh, yeah. you cringe. <laughs> yeah. And before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you guys or find out what you're up to, you know, tour dates and everything, where should they go? Uh, probably Instagram or Facebook or our splash page, hilltopwoods.com. Um, you find us. At Hilltop Hoods on Instagram or Facebook. So, uh, any and all information that you need, you'll be able to find across those. Perfect. And all the tour dates, so everyone can go buy tickets and see you guys live. It's going to be an yeah, epic all, concert. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we'll to. yeah, well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'd love to have you on again in the future. Hopefully, next time we can have a chat in person. Yeah, word well, up. All right, let's do that. We'll keep in contact and we'll make it happen. Thank you. Have a good one. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, visit our website, raveituptv.com. Now, before I go, everybody, remember, if you spend too much time thinking about a thing, you'll never get it done.